Hi, this is a quick reprise with some pictures of the information we were talking about on last Wednesday, looking at roof structures. Here you can see a very small building. It's only 1800 millimetres across, so it's got a, a very small roof. And in this building, you can imagine if we were to put a load on at high level, as long as we've got a really good fixing on either side, in each of the corners here and here, we're not likely to get this roof spreading at all, especially if the ridge is supported at each end of what is actually a very small building. This building's quite a bit larger, it's more than three metres across, and you can imagine if we were to put any significant loads on top of the roof at the ridge, we're going to end up with much more of a, a, a bigger load at the sides trying to push this roof apart. So what we would do with a roof like this is tie the two sides together with another piece of timber. I've got a piece of timber here I cut earlier to suit and I just need to bring it up and fix it to where my rafters meet my wall plate. There. And you can see if that's fixed through to my rafters that's going to then stop them spreading. But of course we need one of those for each of our sets of rafters. So we'll just fix those. Now you can see we've got effectively a ceiling here as well as our sloping rafters which will carry our roof. You can see the rafters are cut out over the wall plate just here and we've got our ceiling joists tying the whole lot together. So that is our medium scale scenario. Here we've got an even bigger roof and the same size rafters and these are starting really to look rather smaller than they should be. This is the kind of scenario where we might introduce purlins to make our roof that much stronger. And I've got a bit of purlin I've um, created over here. So try. Okay. Here our rafters are bird's mouthed over our purlin so that we've got the support for the rafter just there which is roughly mid-span and also at the edge. And then we've got to support the purlin on something. So it's running through into the wall here which is going to give it its support at that end. What about the other end? What I've drawn here is like a queen post truss arrangement which is a traditional kind of truss it's made of much, much heavier timbers than you would find in your rafters. So the rafters are still quite small, but the truss is much, much bigger. That's supporting the purlins running along here. And you can see that we've got a support and a very massive piece of timber framing just here. If we copy another rafter, or another group of rafters further along, you'll be able to get a sense of just how much bigger these things are. OK, so that's our little rafters, and you can see the great big truss behind them. And that's what gives this kind of structure its strength. You'd need one of these trusses round about every two to three metres, probably. Or alternatively, you could do the same job by bringing a wall up to support, and, and actually having the purlins supported on the wall. Our final scenario is a trust rafter roof where we've got an engineered truss which has been made from smaller timber components fixed together with plates of galvanised steel. Instead of having a ridge plate, these meet at a ridge in themselves, up here, and they're simply repeated along the length of the building. So you get a bit of a forest of, of, of spars up in the roof space, and these would then have timbers running diagonally to give the bracing to fix them together. So running along kind of like that, from a high point on one to a low point on another. So that's our most common scenario in modern building today, is the trust rafter roof.